Chapter 6, The Triumph. Spex reviewed the Christmas tree in the sitting room after breakfast and looked upset. It was bigger than his own. Got one downstairs, too, crowed Jimsy. Uncle Abe, he added, he sort of wanted to be awful Christmassy through the whole house. And, and Jiminy Cricket, Spex, it is. Uncle Abe? Who's Uncle Abe? Uncle Abe Sawyer, Jimsy bristled. What you got to say about it? Nothing. Did you get two trees, Specs? Nah, hain't many folks did, I guess. Tain't nothing to crow about anyway. Huh, thought you said the Middletons was more Christmassy in us. I didn't. Ye did. I didn't. You did too, and I walloped you for it. I'll wallop ye again if you say you didn't. Jimsy, Aunt Judith's gentle voice put an end to controversy. An armistice was pledged. Did you get skate specs? Nope. Gosh, I'm sorry for that. I got two pairs. Maybe, Aunt Judith? Yes, Jimsy. Would ye maybe mind me giving Specs a pair of skates? Mr. Middleton, he ain't so Christmassy as you and Uncle Abe. Specs swallowed hard and accepted this and the skates, but he could not forbear at least one shaft of triumph. I got a sled, Jimsy. Huh, said Jimsy. So did I. Two of them. It was too much. The street urchin and Specs came to the fore in a mighty wave of envy. God, he gulped. Jimsy glowered. Hey, he whispered fiercely. Hain't you got no decency? Specs blushed, apologized, and departed. Later, Jimsy reviewed the Sawyer turkey with a reverential glisten in his eye. Specs, he yelled from the kitchen window. Yee, Specsy! What do you want? Come over and see the turkey. You ain't got two, have you? demanded Specs with suspicion. Naw, said Jimsy. One's enough. This one's bigger than the turkey Pete Guggen raffled off last Christmas Eve. So Specs returned to Envy, for the house of Sawyer had outdone the house of Middleton once more, and Jimsy, in a glow of noisy delight, led him to rows of pies and a barrel of ruddy apples, to celery and tarts, to fruitcake and cranberries and simmering vegetables, in short, to every home-keeping kitchen device for filling a country house with the odor of Christmas and the promise of good cheer. The Sawyer kitchen today was a wonderful place to shine and spice. Even Aunt Judith felt the nameless something in the air, for her cheeks were faintly pink, and the hand that smoothed her snowy apron trembled ever so little. Christmas had not come so this many a year. But Specs departed this time with a furtive air of triumph. Mr. Middleton ain't no stiff, he announced. He's going out on the hill coasting with me this afternoon. Shh, whispered Jimsy fiercely. Do you want Aunt Judith to hear you? I get awful sick of walloping you, Specs. But let me hear you say that again, and I'll baste you good. The kitchen door swung back. Specs palled as, he, as well he might. The first citizen stood in the doorway, his mouth set. Jimsy, he said, clearing his throat. Get your sled, my boy. We'd better try it out before dinner. Hi, Mom. It was a challenge to the Middletons, of course, but afterwards, in a wild moment of panic, Abner Sawyer felt that he would have retracted at any cost had it not been for the wonderful glow in Jimsy's face. He felt a little sick, God help him. He liked Jimsy. He wanted to please him.